Okay, awesome. All right, hey everyone, I'm Kara. I'm with Boston Women's Market. I'm super excited to be here tonight with y'all. I'm super excited to be here with May. If you don't know who May is, she is our like Instagram social media guru for Boston Women's Market. I am a self-proclaimed um, not fan of Instagram or social media. Um, it really stresses me out and I know it stresses others out and things are always changing about it. And the way you should be approaching is so unique to everyone. So I'm really excited to be here tonight to talk about ways that you can personally look at your own Instagram account, what you've been doing and do a self audit. Um, May has worked with some of our Boston Women's Market uh, marketing clients on social media, on audits. And we thought this workshop would be great for some of that maybe isn't ready to work with a marketing team, but they want to seek the benefits and have the knowledge to do an audit themselves. So I think we're going to get a lot out of this workshop today. Um, I Housekeeping rules, I usually just put out there, this webinar is being recorded. We're going to circulate the recording probably tomorrow morning. Um, so you can refer back to any of this information at any time. I ask that you keep yourself on mute if you are not speaking. Um, I know like my dog loves barking at inopportune moments. Um, things ha like that happen all the time. So just keep yourself on mute, but um, we encourage questions throughout the workshop. May will be stopping periodically to answer, to ask questions. May I'll be fielding the chat, but we also mm -hmm. love to hear people's voices. So you're welcome to turn on your camera um, or just turn on your audio, ask that question um, to have that interaction is always great, but camera is always optional too. Um, and with that, I think I will turn it over to you, May. Perfect. Hello, everyone. Um, it is great to be here um, today. As Kara mentioned, we're kind of just going to be going over how you can do an audit of your own Instagram. Um, and the reason that we do that is to make sure that we are staying consistent, that we are keeping up with our goals, and that we are listening to our audiences. Um, Instagram is all about making sure that you understand who you're talking to and that you're creating some of that content um, to really help help them. Um, so with that being said, we're going to dive right in. Um, and then just a few notes. I do tend to speak a little bit fast. So <laughs> if that happens, feel free to stop me at any point. And then again, we also will be, um, I'll be, if you have any questions, feel free to just unmute yourself and um, ask it as we go through this presentation. All right. So first things first, um, basically what we're going to be going over today is just some of the basics. Um, and then we're going to be going up, going over how your brand is showing up online. We'll do some basic analytics overview, and then just a few of the recommendations I have that you can take, um, that you can use to take your profile to the next level. So first things first, we'll be going over username, um, profile photo, Instagram bio, and your highlights. So first things first, the username. Um, username, um, depending on what your business is or who you are or you know what you're doing, it should be a very searchable and easy to remember name. Um, we always want to make sure that we are avoiding using any extra characters like an underscore or numbers. Um, that is not um, a rule. So I do know that some people like their username is already taken and they have no other option. But if you can avoid it, um, that's the best best way to do it. And then if you are if you are your business, your name should be um, obviously your username. And then if you have built your brand, your username should be your brand name. So here we can take a look at two of these accounts um, as an example. Um, Boards by Mo is a local charcuterie um, business. She sells cheese boards. Um, and here you can see that her name, very easy, very searchable, Boards by Mo. And then down here, you'll see Vicky Plavanova. Um, she is her, she is her business, right? She is a fitness instructor, um, and so she sells herself pretty much. And here we can see um, her username very easy. Um, it's her own name, um, and so those are some of the key points to kind of 
consider when putting together a username, whether it's for your personal brand or for your business. In terms of profile photo, um, again, the profile photo should be very easy to read or see depending on whether it's a photo of yourself or a logo, and it should represent your business very well. So for personal brands, um, a clear and close-up photo of yourself is ideal, um, thinking about the colors and the background so that nothing clashes and to make sure that you are standing out um, in the photo. If your brand um, is the business and it's not yourself, um, your profile photo can either be your logo or just a business name. Um, this kind of just helps create familiarity with your audience, making it easier for people to recognize your brand when they come across your profile. Um, so these are two very um, nice examples. Here you can see a very clear photo. Um, the background is white. She's wearing a darker color. Um, the way that she did her makeup helps her stand out. Um, so everything about this photo works really well. And then in comparison here, we can see um, this is a business at Go Market. Um, and you can see their logo very clearly. Again, a very light background with a very dark line to help it stand out. Now for this one down here, can anyone guess what is wrong with this photo for a floral company? So this is a floral company. They are also at Bull Market, one of our absolute favorite florists. <laughs> but their profile photo is not our favorite. Can anyone guess why? I have a thought, but if anyone yeah. else has a thought before I do, because <laughs> I Go always ahead. interject. Well, it's kind of like washed out with the background. It doesn't really pop. And then I guess, like, I didn't even realize that the statue was wearing sunglasses until just now, actually, which is a cool factor, but I didn't realize it. Mm -hmm. No, so that you can also take that into consideration. Um, but with this photo, you cannot tell who this is. You cannot tell what business this is. You cannot tell who it belongs to. For all I know, it can belong to any florist anywhere in the United States, across the world. We just don't know who this brand is. Um, so what I would suggest is either putting, so this company, I don't know if anybody's ever heard of them, but they're Rococo Floral um, and they are at Bow Market. They are an amazing, um, they're florists and the two owners, they're actually very active on their uh, social media. So for their account, I would suggest either both of the owners being the profile photo or um, their logo. Um, again, we want to create brand familiarity. We want people to be able to recognize who they are and who you are, obviously, whenever you are selecting the um, profile photo for your profile. Uh, next, we will be going into the Instagram bio. Um, now, this is a little um, template that I like to use or follow whenever I am working with clients. Um, but again, it doesn't have to be this way. It's just one that I like to use, one that I see um, good return in, in terms of how people um, connect with the um, account owner. Um, so again, just having a very searchable name, um, sharing your transformation or what you do, credibility and a clear call to action. Now these profiles, um, they are not a hundred percent, but they are pretty, um, they're pretty close in terms of having all of these, having a check mark next to all of these. So first things first is just a searchable name. Um, so up here you can see Vicki, she added fitness to her name. Um, so it's not her username, it's into her name. And the reason that she did that is if I go into Instagram and I search for fitness, right? Um, anybody who has fitness in their username will most likely come up um, versus somebody who does not. So if she had removed this, she most likely would not come up if I was searching up fitness. And again, this is just a way to improve SEO, um, making your name searchable, helping you reach the people who are actually searching for what you are offering. Um, Monisha here, she her hers is not too searchable. Um, it would have been better if she had changed this and added charcuterie or cheese boards or cheese plates, um, whatever people might be searching for. Um, so that's where I would give her a little um, suggestion, suggestion to edit. In terms of transformation and what you do, 
Um, you can tell here when you come onto Vicki's profile, you can see that she offers mobility, home, and gym programs. Um, and then same thing down here with Monisha, right? So she's at Boston's Custom Charcuterie Arrangements, Workshop, and Catering. Um, that is very clear, very straight to the point. It gives the audience um, information right away about what you are doing and what you are offering. Um, and it's great to have that in the very second line um, of your bio. Next up is credibility. Um, so we want people to be able to trust you um, when you're telling them, you know, what to do or what to buy or whatever it is that you are offering um, on your social pages. Um, here you can see that both of them used it in a different way. So for example, Vicki, she here, she mentions that she does online coaching, but that she's also a certified personal trainer. I'm not sure what CES is, but I'm sure it's another certification um, for fit, anybody who is in the fitness industry. Whereas Monisha, she decided to highlight that she is a Boston Business Journal's 40 under 40 winner. Um, either way, both of these give credibility, right, to the person and their accomplishments or whatever certifications that they have. So depending on what you offer specifically, um, it's great to include some kind of credible note um, in your bio. And then lastly is just a very clear call to action. Now for both of these, um, the one that is the most clear obviously is Monisha's. So she has a very direct, this is where you can order. She adds her links down here at the bottom. Um, with Vicky, she uses her links as a different way because she is an influencer. Um, so she wants you to be able to click right on what she's promoting. But if she was not an influencer and if she was just a fitness instructor looked at, looking to get more um, clients, um, you know, she would probably just add something like buy my programs or check out my programs and link down here. So you just want to make sure that whenever you are directing your audience to something, um, make it very clear um, and very direct. And then one thing that I personally, and again, you don't have to make any changes based on this, is just a personal preference. I don't love having all of the links. Um, I am a very big fan of, again, giving your, your audience or your prospective clients one very straight path on what you want them to do. So if you have um, like a landing page or a very specific offer that you're trying to sell, um, or you have like an order form, I would always direct them to that directly versus having a huge list of links that you want people to click through. Now, this won't work for every single business. Um, obviously, some people have a lot more to share. Um, but if you can make that happen, um, try to really minimize the number of touch points um, for your client to transition into making a purchase from you. May we have a couple questions? Yeah, yeah. Um, so Kayla did put this one in the chat and Kayla um, actually just joined the workshop. So we actually already covered this, but she's wondering what your thoughts on logo in your profile photo is versus a photo of your product or. Uh, okay. So yeah, we did touch on this. So I believe Carrie, you'll be sending the replay. Um, yeah. So when you rewatch it, you can, we, you can kind of see it in more detail, but again, we really just talked about um, depending on whether you're a personal brand or, you know, your brand is separate from yourself um, to have either very clear profile photos um, or a very clear and legible logo um, as your photo. And then I had a question in regards to your name. So I know that we um, talk about, you know, you don't want underscores, you don't want extra characters, things like that. Mm -hmm. If you are going to be changing your name, do you think it's smart to do some kind of announcement to your community about the fact that you're going to change your name? Can it cause confusion when like people see you as something else and you're like, wait, who is this? This isn't someone I, how do I follow this person? But really they just changed their name. Like, do you have any guidance there? Yeah. So it really just depends on how drastic the change is going to be. So for example, um, boards by Mo is boards by Mo, but if she was boards by Mo underscore or underscore one, two, three, and she happened to be able to get access to boards by Mo, she doesn't have to make any changes. Now, if she is changing her whole name to like boards by Monisha or, um, charcuterie by Monisha, like she changed a very big 
part of what her name was, um, then I would announce it just because if I know her as Boards by Mo, the very first thing I'm going to type in is Boards. And if now she's Charcuterie by Monisha, the C won't show up. Um, so people will have a different, uh, not a difficult time, it's just like a harder time um, finding her name when they're searching for it. Sorry, I was huh? muted. I'm, talk I'm talking to myself and I was muted. Um, we have another question that came in from Beth. Um, she okay. asked, do you need to put a searchable term next to your name if you have it in your company name? For example, my company is Alumet Candle Co. So does the cover, does that cover the searchable term piece? So um, it depends if it's here. So if, if your business name is on your username, um, but if here, all you have is, did you say it was Al Alumet? Alumet. Um, if here, all you have is Alumet, then no. But if you have it written as Alumet candles, then you don't need it because it's already there. Okay. Cool. All right. All right. I am going to move on. And then if there are any other questions we can, um, on this specifically, we can save it towards the end. All right, um, now we are going to go into Instagram highlights. Um, and it's important to know that um, Instagram highlights is to help people stick to stick around and learn more about you. Um, so the way that I look at it is you can use Instagram highlights in two ways, right? So the very first way is to help the audience to get to know you. Um, and then the second way is to get the audience to stick around. Now, if you opt for um, strategy one, which is to help the audience to get to know you. Um, this is perfect for somebody who doesn't have too much time to be updating their story highlights all the time. Um, you don't really have time to be going on stories all day, every day. Um, so this is a good option to really just leave things set up and ready to go on your profile. Um, so some of the things that you might want to feature is in about you or about your brand. Um, testimonials for social proof. So whenever somebody is coming onto your profile, you need to make sure that they can trust you somehow. So testimonials, um, reviews, these are great um, to keep on your profile for people who are going in and trying to learn more about you. Um, number three is just some behind the scenes content. So whether you are packaging orders or creating something something, or putting something together, um, always sharing some of this behind the scenes to really generate that connection with your audience, even though you're not on stories all the time. And then um, any frequently asked questions. So anything that you see um, people usually asking you. So do you ship internationally? Um, you know, do you offer X, Y, and Z? Um, anything that you that you feel is a very common question, just leave it in the highlights because then they can get those questions answered right away and move into whatever next stage of um, the buyer journey that they are in with you. Um, again, as I mentioned, this is a great way uh, to have it so that you don't have to, so that you don't have to spend too much time on stories, and it just gives people some basic information about your business. Um, the second way is to get your audience to stick around your profile. Um, now, this is great if you um, do have some time to be updating frequently. Um, and it's great because it gives people more information. It gives them free content um, that gets them to familiarize themselves with what you have to offer and what you are bringing to the table. Um, this is an example of a profile that does that really well. Um, this profile, uh, sorry, this one um, is the Healthy, the Healthy Gut Club. Um, so you can check out their social highlights um, here. And then this one is um, social social with Carrie, I believe, K-A-R-Y. So you can check out her, pro her profile later as well. Um, but with this one, she really um, just gives direction. Um, it helps if you understand the pain points. It provides um, direct solutions, and then it creates binge bingeable content. So gives direction. Um, if you look closely, you can see one of her very first highlights or she 
updated it with this one, but the very first one is a welcome one. So whenever somebody new lands on her profile, um, the very first thing that they're going to see is welcome, right? So it's kind of like she has opened the door to her office and you are walking in and she is welcoming you personally. Um, when you click on this highlight, she introduces herself. She introduces her brand. Um, she lets you know ways that she can help you. Um, and this is great because it's automatically going to filter out who is ideal for your content versus who isn't, right? So if she tells you that she help, helps you create more content for Instagram versus Facebook, and you were looking for help with Facebook, then you automatically know that she's not the person for you, but she also knows that you are not the person for her, um, which is great for increasing engagement um, on Instagram. Um, next, she really understands her audience, right? So for this strategy to work, you need to be able to understand your audience, um, understand what their pain points are, because then she gives this these direct solutions to what those pain points are. Um, so if they are coming on her profile and they're looking for Instagram tips, she has a whole folder full of very valuable information about whether or not, um, not whether or not about the Instagram tips that she's offering. Um, the reason she does that is because she also offers a social media management like program, right? So if you are interested in managing your own social media and you've just consumed this entire folder of highlighted content on Instagram tips, you are very likely to wanna look into her program. Um, so again, this can work for pretty much anything. Um, it really, again, just depends on what your audience needs from you. So I don't know if you guys are familiar with this account. Um, I'm sure you might be um, Betches. It's B-E-T-C. C-H-E-S. Um, and they're an entire account just focused on <clears throat> memes, right? So if you go on to their profile, you'll see that one of their highlights is just a lot of repurposed TikToks that people are just going to sit through and watch and watch and watch. And the reason that that is important um, is because Instagram is a free platform, right? And as a free platform, they make money through ads. And so they need to make, to find a way to get people to stick around and watch their ads. Um, the more you get people to stay on your story, so not skip through your stories, um, the more you get people to sit there and watch, the more Instagram picks up your profile as a profile of value, um, a profile that has people who sticks around and so they know that they can advertise within your content. Um, so again, making sure that you understand your audience's pain points, providing direct solutions to those pain points in highlights um, is a great way to keep people on your profile, which is what we call bingeable content, um, content that's going to get people to just sit there and listen to what you have to say. I believe this is our question pit stop. <laughs> we do have one question for you if you want to take a drink of water while I ask yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was really good. That was a really good slide. That was really good information. Um, so Kay from Kay's Curries is asking if the highlights stick in a certain order. I'm guessing, Kay, you mean like, can you rearrange them at your will? Yeah. 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 So what happens is, can we like, what I found, like we have, let's say we have like six highlights and let's say events happen more than our products, right? So every time we update like an event or something that gets pushed to the front, but we want products, testimonials, like in that order. And that's, you know, I find, I don't know why Instagram doesn't do it like that. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. So it, there is no way to stick it um, to the very front. Um, what I have tried before that has worked, but again, you have to keep doing it over and over again, which can also just get annoying, um, is just adding something to the very end of a highlight and then deleting it later. Um, mm. Once you've added something to it, it goes back to the top. So even if you remove it after, um, it'll still be first. But again, you just have to remember to keep going in there and adding something if you want a specific highlight to be first. Got it. All right. Thank you. Yeah, I've totally experienced that one too myself. Yeah. That's a <laughs> Does anyone else have any other questions? And you're welcome to unmute yourself, plop it in the chat. Um, we'll just pause for a couple seconds. 
All right, let's All keep right. going. Right, oh, I, actually, sorry, yeah. I have a, another question now that I'm looking at that Instagram thing. So highlights, um, sorry, I'm cooking in between so I cannot be on video, but um, what I found is you can only add from your story, right, to the highlight. Is that true? Like you can't just add a post. No, you have to, it has to have come from your story. So if you want yeah. to add a post, you just have to share your your post story, to and, your then, story okay. and then you can save it. So basically, if you forget doing it right away, then it just, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Not very intuitive. I it's, just want to, so some of these I ask because I have an Android phone. I know like the iOS oh, mm -hmm. app is more flushed out than the Android. Anyway, thank you. Yeah, sure. Thanks. Um, perfect. So next we are going to dive into how your brand is showing up. So just something to think about is if someone comes to your profile, um, can they feel your personality kind of shine through? And when I say your personality, I really mean um, your brand's personality. So a few things that we're going to go over is just your brand personality, consistent branding, photography, and just some of the uses of Instagram's features. So when you're putting together your brand personality, um, you want to focus on three things, right? So that's who you are, who cares, and what your goals are. Um, you want to make sure that your brand conveys a personality so that people have something to connect to, right? So if you just sell um, a certain product, so like let's say you sell cups, I'm pretty sure you guys are pretty familiar with this, but why do you sell these cups? What is the lifestyle that you are trying to promote with these cups? So a few questions that I like to keep in mind when we're putting together brand personalities is um, what adjectives describe your brand? Um, you know, what, what are the words that come to mind when you think about your brand? And one of my favorite ones is if your brand was a celebrity, who would it be and why? So I've had people tell me that their brand is like Reese Witherspoon. Um, when you're selecting a celebrity to connect to your business, um, you want to be able to imagine your brand or your business as somebody standing in front of you, right? Um, what type of clothes do they wear? Um, how, like what are, who are the people that they hang out with? Um, are they funny or are they more serious? Um, this kind of really helps you really build that personality for your brand. Um, and then another thing is just making sure that you know what you stand for um, and what your mission is. So as a brand, what are you getting people to believe in? Um, what are you kind of backing, right? Um, and then this also ties into some of the values that you hold. Um, the people that join your, your community or your, your space, um, what are they agreeing to? What are they seeing that you value that they're like, hey, I value this also. Um, this, all of these put together is what gets people to buy more than just cups. Um, it gets them to buy whatever movement you're creating. It gets them to um, trust the lifestyle that you're building. Um, and again, that also ties into the transformation that you are bringing to the table. So what is it that your audience is missing that um, you can solve? And that brings us into, again, who cares? So that's your audience, right? Um, with everything that you are putting out on Instagram, um, it's very important that you understand who you're talking to. And the reason for that is if you are um, mixed up about who it is that you're serving, um, the less engagement they are going to be um, engaging with on your profile. And so it'll quite literally tank um, your reach and how Instagram pushes out your content. So before you start putting out all this information or putting out, you know, all the content that you're creating, it's really important that you understand who you're talking to, that you understand what their pain points are, um, that you understand again, what transformation they're looking for. Um, and then also understanding why they should be getting this transformation from you. So knowing your value, knowing what makes you stick out or not stick out, but stand out. Um, and then really kind of learning what objections they might face when they're trying to buy from you. So, you know, is it a price point? Um, is it quality? Like you need to be able to answer their objections through the content that you're sharing. 
And then lastly is knowing what your goals are. Um, Instagram is is great for you to post, but if you have a business, you want to make sure that you're meeting some of the goals that you have set for yourself. Um, so what are your goals? Is it to generate new leads? Are you looking for email subscribers? Um, is it to increase sales? Um, are you, again, just trying to get people to buy more, increase brand, brand awareness? Um, do you want to be kind of seen as an authority in your industry? Are you looking to build community? All of this, um, all of these goals is going to help you analyze whether or not your content is performing well or not. Um, again, there are various different um, metrics inside of Instagram. So you can um, analyze likes, comments, saves, um, shares. You can analyze a whole lot of things, um, but those numbers really don't mean anything if there isn't a goal tied, uh, tied to your content. So it's again, very important to have these set out before you put together like a content calendar. Um, again, so you can just, um, when you get this recording, you can screenshot this last slide and really just take some time to fine tune your brand personality so that you can show up with intention. Um, but again, we can also help with that. So if at any point you are interested in having your brand personality developed, you can visit the Boston Women's Market website. Um, and there's some more information on there on how we can set that up for you. Next um, is consistent branding. Um, so knowing what your aesthetic is, um, your logo. How is your logo showing up on your page? Um, the fonts that you choose, which kind of fonts did you choose um, and why? Um, understanding, and obviously we're not gonna have everybody dive into this um, if you are not already a professional graphic designer, um, but everything from fonts to colors, um, really affects how your audience looks at your brand, right? So if you are pairing a very curvy and thick font, you might come off as more playful versus if you have longer letters that are thinner, your brand might come out as more elegant. Um, so a lot of times when we're kind of like designing our um, our brand guide, um, we usually want to opt for things that we like but without thinking about how that is going to show up for the person that is looking at your um, at your brand. Um, so really taking some of this stuff into consideration. And this is something that um, if you Google, you can find some of that information, um, even on just like basic fonts, um, really to just make even smaller adjustments if you have to. Um, same thing with color palette. If you search up um, color theory, you can learn a little bit more about what colors represent and what they mean when they're either paired together or by themselves. And then you can kind of just analyze whether or not your brand is being represented the way that you want it to be. Um, another thing is your photo editing style, um, your video um, filming style, and your video editing style. So all of these are things that you can personalize to yourself. Um, you can change up the way that you edit your photos, or you can have like a signature way that you film your content. Um, and then you can also have your signature aesthetic when it comes to how you edit your content. The point of this is that we want to make sure that your brand is recognizable. Um, no matter where it shows up, we want to make sure that people know that this is your brand. Um, so if we come here, we can see a few examples. Um, and then once the presentation is over, you can visit some of these people's Instagrams um, just to kind of see for yourself. So again, we're bringing out the Healthy Gut Club because they do a very um, good job in representing their brand, whether it's through their colors, um, having their logo pop up here and there, um, the way that they set up their content, everything about this works. Now with Broma Bakery, um, she has like a very signature uh, filming style. So if you go to her profile, um, you can see that a lot of her videos start pretty similarly. So, and they're filmed with a lot of the very similar backgrounds. So when somebody sees this recipe on their profile, as they're scrolling through their feed, um, they 
automatically know that this is going to be a Broma, Baker, Broma Bakery recipe. And that is the association that we want um, when you guys are putting content together. Um, down here, you can see Lavendaire. Um, she focuses a lot on self-improvement. Um, so pro productivity. And so you can see that the types of um, fonts that she chooses brings that feeling of peace and um, calmness. And so the way that she shows up, not only with her fonts, but her colors as well, um, again, is very cohesive on her profile. And then down here, um, Viv for your V, another local brand that we also really love, um, very on brand. You can see um, she sells um, women's products, menstrual products. Um, and here you can see, again, just very on brand. Her colors are very strong. Um, the font that she chooses, um, again, there is meaning behind all of that, but it all fits into her profile and you can kind of see that it belongs to her brand. Um, so again, consistency looks different um, on every profile. Um, again, if you're selling a product, it might look more like this, where you feature your product throughout. Versus if you do video content of recipes or talking content, um, again, just finding a way to make it personal to you and what you and your aesthetic and what you have to offer. Next um, is photography. So this is a very big one um, because a lot of times people don't have the um money, first of all, to invest in professional photography. Um, and then a lot of times they'll take the photos and as I see on various profiles, they'll take the photos and they'll upload the photo as it is. That is very complicated um, because every time you take a photo, it's either in different lighting, um, the background might look a little bit different. So again, we want to make sure that we are creating a familiar space for our audience. So if you are taking um, pictures on your phone, um, there are things that can be, that can be very easily adjusted. So if you download like the Lightroom app or the VSCO, like Visco app, um, you can select some kind of filter that works for you and the aesthetic that you're trying to create. Um, but there are also some very, um, beautiful templates that you can buy that are like editing templates um, that go directly into your Lightroom app. And so whenever you take a photo, it does adjust that so that your photos can stay consistent. Um, another thing that I've personally invested in for some of the clients that we work with um, is just some of those backdrops. Um, so I know replica surfaces is a really good one, but they are very expensive. <laughs> and so I have found um, this this brand here on Amazon. It is clickable. So if you guys get a copy of this um, of this presentation, you can click on it. Um, but they have some very affordable um, backdrops that you can use to photograph some of your content. Um, they come with these like little hooks. So like you can create like that little like L shape where you can have the front and the bottom. Um, so they're very convenient and it really, again, just helps to create consistency, whether you like, let's say you sell jewelry or you sell stickers or well, I don't know what it is that you guys sell. Um, just having that background, um, or that backdrop is going to be, um, very important. And then free stock photography. One thing I like to do, especially for reels, and if the person doesn't like taking their own like personal photos, is to make sure we're still keeping the aesthetic together by using stock photography. Um, so a couple of websites that I use all the time is Pexels and Unsplash. Um, Pexels is really good for photos and videos. And then Unsplash, I believe the quality of photos on Unsplash is um, better, um, but they do require that you do some like digging, right? So if you are looking for something, especially on Unsplash, you can type in like in the search bar what you're looking for. Um, but then once you find it and you click on it, you can keep scrolling down and they'll start to like fine tune your search. Um, that way it makes it easier for you to find other similar, um, 
other similar product, uh, photos. And what I like to do um, is like maybe a couple times a month, I'll spend an hour just doing a deep dive into Unsplash. So I'll like go into like the recommended information at the bottom, like I'll open that and then look into that and then start creating collections um, inside of Unsplash of photos that I think I can use. Um, so again, it really just helps keep your um, profile consistent while creating that like environment of this is the lifestyle that we are building for the people that visit this page. Um, and then next is just the Instagram features. Um, so Instagram, they release a lot of features and it's, it can be very frustrating for, for everyone who is trying to keep up with Instagram. Um, but the thing with Instagram is then as they're trying new features, they want people's feedback, right? So if you do get access to some of the Instagram features, um, it's great for you to try it out. Um, again, because there's not going to be too much competition um, since people are just trying to learn it, trying to figure it out. Um, and Instagram will kind of favorite favor your profile if you are using or testing out some of their features. Um, so these are just some of the, again, just try using all of their features, experiment with some of their new features, see what your audience is engaging with, and just always remember to be clear with your goals. So you don't have to do it all, but if there are certain features that work well with what you're trying to um, accomplish, give those a try. Um, now we will go into just reviewing some of your weekly analytics. Um, and I do want to have a disclaimer here. Again, analytics is very personal to each account. So there, so there isn't too much we can dive into here. Um, if you do want like help reviewing some of your analytics, um, you can reach out and we can help you kind of just understand your analytics a little bit more. Um, but a few things to keep in mind is for weekly um, analytics reviews, um, what was your goal for the post? Um, so let's say your goal was to generate sales. Um, what what CDA, CTA did you include? So let's say your CTA was um, click the link in your bio. You're, when you're reviewing your analytics, you're not going to look at how many likes you got. You're not going to look at how many comments. You're going to look at how many people followed followed your call to action and actually click, clicked the link in your bio. You're going to review each one of your posts um, based on your goal and the CTA. So depending on what it is that you set up for like the intention for the post that you just posted, that's what you're going to measure on whether or not it performed well or not. And then you can go into and review your monthly analytics. Um, so when you're reviewing your monthly analytics, um, you can go in and you can start with your reach. Um, here you can learn a little bit more about who you're reaching and how, um, what content is reaching more people, and you can look at your impressions, which is just the number of times your content was shown to people. Um, you can also dive into the accounts engaged. So if your follower engaged is lower than your non-follower engaged, you want to try and increasing engagement with your followers. And the reason for that is, and I'm going to try to explain it um, in a way that is pretty quick. So the way that Instagram works is when you post something online, right, they're going to send it to um, your audience the people who engage with you the most. If those people engage with you, they're gonna send it to another small portion of your audience um, of people who don't engage with you so much. And if those people engage with you, um, they're gonna send it to yet another group of people who follow you but are not engaging with you at all. Um, and if those people engage with your post, then they can potentially push it out to the explore page. Um, if your follower, um, list isn't very engaged, whenever you push out content, um, those people are not, and those people are not engaging with your content. Instagram is going to limit how many people can see your post. So you always want to make sure that you're going in and interacting with some of your followers, uh, replying to their comments, encouraging them to um, reply to you in stories. Um, and then even if you have some time just going into their profile um, and you know, liking one of their photos or something like that to make sure that they remember that you're still there. And then you're going to review your goals for the month. So um, if like, for example, if your goal was to increase awareness, check how many saves. If your goal was to increase engagement, check how many comments. 
Um, again, everything is going to depend on the goals that you have set up for yourself and for your account. Um, so it's good to have those written down somewhere so that you can always look back and analyze depending on what your goals were for the month. From there, once you have a chance to review your analytics, that's when you can fine tune your strategy. Um, so this is where you're going to get all the information to learn how you can adjust your strategy to get closer to your goals. And then lastly, you want to make sure that you're listening to your audience's needs. So again, I am going to repeat this over and over again, but understanding what your audience needs from you does play a very crucial role in how your content performs. Um, so you want to make sure that you are talking directly to them, you're answering their questions, you're solving their pain points. Um, and yeah, that's going to be some of the most important uh, takeaways from this. And then we are going to go into just a few ways that you can um, take your profile to the next level. Um, so the very first one, and this might be a little, not a little, it might be a lot of information. So um, you can take this with a grain of salt, but it is what I like to um, incorporate when we're creating content. Oh, okay, there we go. Um, and that is the buyer's journey. So I found this graphic um, that represents each of the stages really well. Um, so you can take a lot of the information from the your buyer side. Um, but for this side, I've kind of added some of my own notes here um, because this focuses more on overall marketing and not so much on Instagram marketing. So at any given time, um, there are very different people that are coming onto your profile. Um, they are in various different stages and the people who stick around again, they're in different stages. Um, so we want to make sure that anytime somebody comes on your profile, there is content for them there. Um, and the way that I like to do that is by incorporating the buyer's journey um, in a way for you to plan out your content. Um, so if you look down here, um, you can go into um, understanding the journey that they go through. So the very first stage is the uh, buyer becomes aware of their pain or um, status quo loosens. So when you're creating content for people who are in the awareness stage, you want to make sure that you're creating content to spread um, your message and share about the um, problem that you solve. Here, um, again, they are just learning about you. They're just becoming aware of their pain points. Um, so you want to make sure that they know that whatever they're going through is a problem and it's a problem that can be solved. Um, next, they are, they're going to go into interest. Um, so they're looking for a solution. Um, again, here, you're going to want to create content um, that makes them aware of their pain points. So like any means or anything that makes them feel like, oh my God, like, that happens to me. Um, that's where you want to create this type of content um, into consideration. This is where they're going to evaluate specific products and services, um, and they're going to want to start engaging with people who are selling something to help them. Um, so here you can use um, teaching content to help validate your expertise um, and to help them understand that you know what you're talking about when they're considering their options. In the purchase stage, um, they are ready to commit to a, a solution or a vendor or a buyer, um, but they need a reason to purchase from you. So this is where you can create content that increases brand trust, um, things like social proof, testimonials, people using your products. Um, this is where you can incorporate some of that content. And then in the post-purchase and repurchase stage, um, they have already purchased from you. They know who you are. They trust you. So here you just want to increase loyalty um, and novelty by developing new offers, programs, products, um, and again, just reward, rewarding some of the loyal customers. Um, with this, um, the way... The way that I like to divide it up is top of funnel and middle of funnel, um, 40 and 40 and that 40%. So 40% of your content should be very top of funnel. 40% of your content should be in the middle. And then 20% of your content should be focusing on some of the people that kind of already trust you and have already purchased from you. 
Um, so again, you can take this with a grain of salt. This is not something that, you know, now you have to sit in and start creating all this content, but just keep in mind that when you are putting some content together, you don't want to have a lot of the same repetitive content, because then if somebody is just coming onto your profile, there's nothing there for them, but you also don't want to only make sales and new products because then the people that are not ready to buy from you yet they they don't trust you yet so again you just want to have a nice balance of some of this on your profile at any given time ah, there we go um, next is another thing that I encourage anyone to um, incorporate if they can, um, and that is um, routines. Um, daily routines just help generate connection and familiarity with your audience. Um, so a few things that I've noticed, so like I'm going to bring back um, Monisha from Boards by Mo. One thing that she used to do every single day um, is do her coffee with us or with the people who follow her so she would grab her cup of coffee she would grab her um, milk and it would always be like a clear glass and she would just pour the milk and it would be like very pretty on the glass and she would just have like a very simple morning chat like hey how are you guys doing as she's pouring her coffee and the moment that she stops doing that for whatever reason Every, she, everybody will DM her and say like that they're looking for her morning coffee. Like, where's your coffee? Like, why didn't you do your coffee? And so whenever people DM'd her about it, she would be like, oh my God, okay, I'm coming back. And then she would go back and do the coffee in her stories. Um, so again, finding little ways that you can implement your day-to-day -day into your content is something that people will kind of start looking forward to. Um, like there's this girl that I follow that she plays... Um, this song, it's it's in Portuguese, but it's like a Friday themed song. So every time that it's Friday, she always plays that song and it's it's become a routine. So now every Friday when I'm on her stories, I know that that song is coming and it just reminds me of her anytime I even listen to it. Um, so again, just finding little ways that you can incorporate your day-to-day, -day, um, what you already do daily that you can share with your audience. So it doesn't have to be something that you create out of the blue just to share. It can be something that's already part of your routine that you can share and that it fits in with your audience. If you don't have something that you want to share, um, you can also just share phrases or something that you believe in. Um, so like, let's, for example, there's another account. Um, I'm going to forget her name right now, but she started this whole movement of bare minimum Monday. And I don't know if you guys have seen it, um, but her whole idea is that if you are working from home, um, you can do whatever it is that you need with your time. And so she started this whole bare minimum Monday where on Mondays you get to do the bare minimum. And so every Monday she'll share something that has to do with bare minimum, bare minimum Monday. She'll share these like memes that have to do with bare minimum Monday. And she asks you to pick which bare minimum Monday meme you are. So it's little ways that you can create that. Again, it's all about consistency, right? Um, that you can create that consistency with your audience and have them looking forward to something on your profile. Um, I tell people all the time, this is not something that you have to overthink. Um, just think about your routine, think about your day to day. Um, and it doesn't have to be like something super interesting. Like you don't have to be like, oh my God, like people are not going to be interested in this content. Um, just think about, you know, what comes natural to you. And you'd be surprised at how much, how much people look forward to what you're sharing consistently. Um, next is putting together captions. Um, so a lot of time we'll see um, people who don't spend too much time thinking about their captions and that's okay. But if you are looking to um, take your profile to the next level, again, I would take some time to just understand some of the captions so you can decide what works better for you, whether it's longer form captions that solve a problem or shorter form captions that are more direct and to the point. Um, so for example, you can see here, Broma Bakery, one of her captions is, two of my favorite tricks to getting sky high muffins without changing the recipe. That's the whole thing. She doesn't give you any more information, um, but she gives you enough information to get you curious. So if you are a baker and you're looking um, 
at her content, you might have had trouble getting muffins that rise up, right? So she is already sharing two of her favorite tricks to make sure that your muffins are going to rise and they're going to look beautiful. Um, and you can also see another post here um, from Re Reformation or Reformation. I don't know how to pronounce it, um, but they have the best captions. You can look um, at their profile later on. Um, they are very direct. Um, again, it shows their personality and who they are and who they're they're trying to connect with. Um, so here it just says the mini Kiara may cause compliments. Um, you don't get too much information, but you know that the mini Kiara is the purse and you know that people are going to be talking about it when they see you with it. Um, so you can really play with how you want to show up. Um, like for example, here is the profile of social with Carrie. She teaches a lot of content, right? So a lot of her content is getting you to learn something. So a lot of her captions you'll notice are they're very long. And people sometimes say like, oh, people don't really read longer captions. They don't spend time like going through all the captions. The people that are not reading your captions are not the people who are going to buy from you. So if if me, for example, if I am looking for ways to grow on social media, I am going to sit here and I'm going to read every single line that is on her caption because I am the one looking to learn more. So it really is going to depend, again, understanding your audience, understanding what they need and deciding how you want to show up for them in that way. And then targeted engagement, um, again, it's just really about creating um, connection. Um, so if you can spend some time interacting with your audience, we've mentioned this already, but just replying to some of their comments, interacting with their accounts, and then engaging with them in DMs. So whether that is asking people to reply to a story, um, anything that gets people to actually engage with you and interact with you. Um, you can also engage with your target audience by visiting profiles with similar audiences and engaging with their active users. So like, let's say you um, sell clothes, right? And you wanna, in, and your audience is similar to Reformation's audience. You can go into their profile, whatever their like most recent post is and see the people who are, the people who's commenting the people who is liking their um, most recent photos. And then if their profile is open, obviously you can go in there and engage with them as your brand. And then also just making sure that you're engaging with any hashtags that you use. Um, so if you are using hashtags in your content, just engaging with the people who are also using some of those hashtags um, to help your content show up a little bit more. And then that's the end. Really, these are some of the services that we offer at um, Boston Women's Market. So if there's anything that you might need help with, you can visit the website um, where it's marketing and design services. Um, I left the link down here as well. Um, but now that we have, we don't have too much time, but I know we had some questions um, that I wanted to answer pretty quickly. And while so you're while you're getting that on me, we do have a question from Sue, and I think this would oh, relate okay. to probably one of the last slides we did. Um, is there a way to circumvent how Instagram sh shares your content, followers, and engagement? How can I get non-followers to see my post? I think this is really interesting because like, I always want non-followers to see Boston Women's Market because I want new people to discover Boston Women's Market, but is that really where the value is? I'm not sure, you know? Mm -hmm. So... Um, again, the way that you're going to get uh, new people to see your content is making sure that the current people that is already following you is happy. Um, so basically, Instagram wants you to serve the people who are already helping you and your account before they decide to show your content to other people. So it's like that little circle that I mentioned before, right? They're going to show it to the first 10% and then they're going to open it up to the people who engage with you less and then the people who don't engage with you. And if the people who don't normally engage with you start engaging with your content, then your profile is likely to be recommended on the explore page. And that's when you're going to start seeing people um, who are new coming onto your profile. Um, you can use hashtags. Um, you can use hashtags. But hashtags have been a little 
I don't know, up in the air lately. Um, you can kind of test it out with your own content, but not a lot of people are seeing too much return with hashtags, while some people are seeing a lot of return with hashtags. So um, try testing it out. Try um, testing it out, whether it's the amount of hashtags that you're using, um, the type of hashtags that you're using. Um, try, again, marketing is all about testing and making sure that things are working or not working. Um, so take some time to test some of these um, techniques out on your own profile and see if anything changes, take notes. Um, and yeah. And then I saw here, um, Juna said, my followers watch all of my stories, but not my feed posts. Am I posting too many stories? Um, so it depends, right? There is never too much content unless it's the wrong content. So if you're posting too much stories and they have no value or they're not generating any connection with your audience and they're just skipping through all of your stories, um, again, you're not getting anybody to stick around. So you're decreasing your engagement. Now, if you're posting high quality stories and you're getting people to stay on your profile for longer Again, Instagram is going to pick that up and they're going to be able to um, promote your account a little bit more or recommend your account a little bit more. Um, and if they're not interacting with your store, with your feed posts, then that's a problem with not understanding what your audience needs from you. So you are pushing out content. Um, what I see a lot of people do is push out content that they want to post versus, again, back to what we've been mentioning this whole um, workshop is what does your audience want from you? If they're not interacting with your posts, if they're not interacting with your reels, if they're not interacting with your stories, then you're not answering the, uh, they're, they're, you're not answering their questions. You're not solving any of their pain points. Um, so it's time to take a step back and kind of organize that aspect of your business a little bit in terms of understanding who your audience is and how you are going to be serving them. Um, let's see here. Um, Beth, when you use a template in Instagram, it overlays in the template sound with the sound of my photos and videos. I should have a button for adding audio, but I don't have it. I've updated and reinstalled the app. No luck. Someone suggested I switch the account from content creator to business. Do you lose any important capabilities such as ability to sell product if you switch to content creator? Um, so I've never, I don't think I've ever had anybody switch from one to the other. So I don't know if you lose, um, but I want to say that you do if you are not a business profile, I want to say that you do lose the capabilities of selling products. Um, and then I did want to go into the questions that people asked beforehand. Um, so Catherine asked, in starting your business's Insta, what are the first few key posts? Um, so just some that I recommend. Um, I do love an intro post. So if your account is brand new, I do love having something that either introduces yourself or your brand. Um, and then I would dive into some of those top of funnel contents and middle of funnel contents. So posts that help generate brand awareness. So talk about who you are, what you do, um, and draws into your audience's pain points, generates connections. Um, these again are more like meme content, aha moment content. Um, so I would focus on a mix of those before doing any of the bottom of the funnel content, which is um, promoting offers and selling. Shirley asked, um, when I first created my, my Instagram page, I did pay for extra followers and now I regret that decision. Is there any way that I can get my page to be seen more even with this issue? Um, so again, the problem with purchased followers is that they're never really going to interact with your page. Um, and again, as I mentioned, Instagram, the way that they push the content out in those levels, um, if the people that you have are not uh, engaging with your content, um, Instagram is going to stop pushing out your content, right? So if your page isn't too big, I would recommend that you start from scratch. And I know that's hard to hear, but it will be better in the long run. Um, and if you don't want to go through that, I would have to say you would slowly have to start removing some of those followers from your list in order to clean it out. Um, so you can, um, I believe you can like unfollow or make sure the people um, like block these people so that they can no longer access your account. Um, but it has to be done very slowly or Instagram will like flag your account and you can be blocked and it's a whole, just don't, don't buy followers. <laughs> Wow, that's really interesting. So the Instagram will even flag you for unfollowing too many people at once. Yeah. 
Oh, wow. Okay. All Looks right. Like we do have a hand raised somewhere. Um, oh, yeah. Yep. Hey, that's me. Hey, yeah. 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 Hi. Um, thank you for this uh, amazing session. I mean, this is this always something you learn every time you hear these sessions. So I appreciate all the time you took. So quick question I have is on collaborations. This is something we're trying to try it out. So not as an influencer, but let's say in the month of March, we did like an interview of other small women owned businesses and kind of added as a, um, you know, added them as collaborators that it would show up on both pages. Um, mm -hmm. I've also messed up with uh, some big, bigger brands. I would say it's just giving it a try and they would never accept you but um so I guess like what's the intent of uh Instagram pushing those out is it really for influencers or like what's a what's a good way to do it or not to do it um are you talking about collaborative posts where like when you yep. share a post it shows up on other people's profiles yeah um so I don't know how Instagram um, intends to push that out, but I do believe it has it has some of the same um, strategy in terms of it's solving a problem for both of the audiences, right? So if I share it on my account and I have like, I don't know, a thousand or 2000 followers, and then I collaborate with somebody who has like 30,000 followers, obviously it's going to get more traction. Um, but if the followers in the other person's account um, isn't interested in the content, then it's going to just decrease their engagement. Um, but even with this, even with collaborations, I would only recommend you collaborate with people who, um, not who have the numbers, but who have your same like ideal audience. Because again, if you're getting these people to see your content and you're getting them to see your profile, you want to make sure that the people who are converting, right? So they're coming over from the bigger profile to your profile are people mm -hmm. who are going to engage with you. Um, because again, if they don't engage with you, it's just going to tank your engagement. Got it. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, just kind of extending that um, a, a bit further, um, you know, obviously there's tons of podcasts and webinars about this topic of micro influencers. Mm -hmm. um, I guess I will leave it as an open question of, can you shed some light on that? On um, what exactly? Uh, micro influencers? Like, um, I guess like it starts from like, how do you choose? Uh, sorry. Who said there was something? Oh, okay, you're breaking up a little bit. Yeah. But uh, May, oh, I think you well, were asking about um, micro influencers in general. Like if they're good to work with? Yeah, how do you pick them? Like, where do you start? Like, what's, you know, I guess, like, where do you find them? What's... Yeah. So there are a lot of websites that you can um, sign up with. Um, I don't know any off the top of my head, but I know that there are quite a few that you can sign up and be connected with. Um, like smaller influencers um, and content creators. Um, that I would say just from experience, so I don't work directly with influencer management, um, but I have clients who have tested out influencer management. Um, and it really, for me personally and what I've seen, right? It's not worth the investment if they can't guarantee the result, right? So if you are partnering with somebody who has like 2000 followers and, you know, you look at their numbers and their numbers seem okay. And you look at their like follower count and their followers seem real. Um, the way that influencers are going, like the direction that they're going right now, and not that they don't deserve it, but their prices are very high. So for smaller businesses who are exactly. just starting out, um, it's the investment, it, it's not worth it. Yeah. Whereas if you are ready to make an investment and you want to be seen by somebody who is going to not guarantee, but you're probably going to have a higher likelihood of seeing results, um, then I would say save up to invest in people who do have a higher following or have higher conversion rates. Um, because like I've had clients who have paid like a thousand to 2000 to even $3,000 to get their products into these micro influencer accounts. And 
maybe they could have found a better way to connect with somebody who was closer to their target audience. But unless you have the skills or you're working with an agency that's helping you and not the influencer, the agency is going to just throw anybody who you're willing to pay your money to. And mm -hmm. again, it's just not going to be, you're not going to see a very big return. Yeah. To your point, like, that's what I found, like people reach out to me and they say, oh, for one post and then two stories, this is X, Y, Z amount. And I'm like, yeah. well, what are you guaranteeing? Like what's guaranteed is a sale guarantee? Nothing. Is no, yeah. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> nothing is guaranteed with, um, influencer promos. Okay. Um, so yeah. Um, right, then you. I, yeah, sure thing. Um, I have here, um, Christine, how do I get more clients for my business? I've treated about 15 people and they've all had great feedback, but only some have rebooked. If I have a Facebook business page, should I also have an Instagram page as well? Um, so I am not too sure how to get more clients for your business, but if you are trying to use social media as a way to increase your brand awareness and bring in potential leads, um, I would suggest actually an Instagram page and a TikTok page um, in order to get in front of your target audience while using Facebook um, as a place for ads, um, depending on your audience's age and you know how they interact with you and your content. Um, Facebook might be a better place for you to invest in ads and then using social to generate organic lead. Um, what Susan asked, what is the direction to take to increase sales from content? So increasing sales means that you're getting um, your client through the buyer journey, right? So you're getting through each one of those stages. Um, and if increasing sales is part of your goal, then you need to create some more bottom of the funnel content. So it's direct sales pitches, regardless of what you're selling. Um, and then you're going to mix it with um, some of the middle of the funnel content. So content that sparks connection or gets them to understand the transformation that you have to offer um, in order to get your audience again, to see why they need to um, buy from you and why your offer is going to solve their problem. This is more of an intense um, strategy, which is why I don't love using Instagram to generate more sales. I like to use it more um, to create community and um, increase brand awareness, uh, because if you are trying to increase sales, um, you have to be very active on there where you're creating all of these various formats of content um, to make sure that your audience doesn't see you only as salesy so that you can create that community while also making sure that you're selling. Um, but again, it's also, it's all about fortifying the connection with your audience to make it easier for them to trust you and actually become your buyer. Um, Beth asks for posts that do better. It seems that they get a lot of likes for about an hour and then it immediately crickets. Why is this? How does Insta function in terms of showing posts to others? So we already talked about this. Um, again, it's just that how Instagram distributes the content. Um, so and so for you to change this, you just need to create content more frequently and diversify it in terms of um, content and Instagram format. So try carousels, try working with reels, um, try any features that Instagram has um, to see what your audience is actually engaging with. Um, so this would be a good uh, opportunity for you to test out some of the content um, and see what performs well and what doesn't. Um, I think there were seven questions total and we're on six. So we're almost done. Um, Alicia asked, um, I'd love to hear your thoughts on personal versus business shop profiles. Is there a benefit to having separate accounts? Um, so she has a shop where she sells fine art photography and hand embroidered products, but she also has a family photography business. Right now, my main personal account is where she posts everything, but it's mostly for family photography. And then she has a separate account for her light and thread shop. Um, the way that I would look at it is if, if she, so there's like a personal account and then there's a professional personal account, right? So if your personal account is, um, you know, the place where all of your friends are, it's where your family is, it's where you share photos of your kids or your pets, um, birthday parties, family trips, then I would not post any business content there. Um, you can create a separate professional personal page um, where it's a page where you share more of your life as it pertains to your business. So if you're a photographer, your life as a photographer, behind the scenes of photo shoots, um, this way is 
you're going to be connecting with other photographers, other photographers. So if you're sharing your life as a photographer, other photographers who are interested in that life are going to start following you. Now, if you're trying to increase sales and book more clients as a photographer, um, I suggest having a professional business page for your photography business where you can showcase some of the work to pr prospective clients. So if you're trying to get people to purchase from you, um, you want to show them the work that you do. You want to show them clients that are already trusting you. Um, you want to give them advice on how to take photos. You know, let's say you do like um, newborn photos. This is what we do to get the newborns to sit still or something like you want to give them quality content that's going to get them to stick around. And then definitely keep your light and your thread shop separate um, because that's a whole different audience. And again, you don't want to mix the two. And then lastly, Heather said, I've heard you can block spam accounts from commenting on your posts by blocking certain word combinations. Um, and how do you do that? So this is our last question. Um, the simple, simplest way is, so I'm just going to go through it step by step, is you're going to go to the top right corner of your profile. Um, you're going to click the three little lines, um, and that's where you're going to find your account settings and privacy. You're going to click on settings and privacy, and you're going to scroll down to where it says hidden words. Once you click there, um, you can scroll to the bottom where it says manage custom words and phrases. And in that section, you can add um, common spam words and phrases that you usually see in your comment section. And Instagram should block it. So anytime that you create a new post and you get those annoying spammy con um, comments that are like automatic, like you just post and three of them show up you should be able to use some of those like phrases like promote it or DM, like whatever, um, directly uh, into this section and Instagram should block it. That's amazing. I'm yeah. like literally on doing it right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so those are all of the questions. Um, I believe we are way over our time limit. <laughs> this is like, I, I always say, I say this like every single workshop we do. It's like we could talk for hours for certain content. And yeah, like, we could. <laughs> and you to ask questions and go off on tangents. It's yeah. really hard to keep it within like an hour and a half time frame. So it is. <laughs> yeah, we really value your knowledge and, and oh, everything you. you're bringing to the table for the Boston Women's Market community. And like, it's really, it's really great. Tonight was really helpful. I'm really, yeah. thank you so much for joining us tonight. Yeah. Thank you everyone yeah. for being here. It was great chatting with all of you. Um, hopefully you guys got some good takeaways from this. Um, and if any questions come up, feel free to DM us, DM me. Um, and I'd be happy to answer any other questions that come up for you guys. Yeah. And if you, if uh, everyone does have my contact info already. So if you want to send us questions and then we'll forward it on to May or we'll connect you directly with May, anything like that, I will be circulating the slides and the recording tomorrow. So just keep an eye out for that. Mm -hmm. um, and then we do have a YouTube channel of all of our Empower Her workshops. So this workshop will be on there. Plus the other ones that May have has done for us and all of our amazing experts have done for us. So you'll be able to check out our entire library there. Um, thank you so much for everyone. We don't have another workshop scheduled yet. We are working on it. So just keep mm -hmm. an eye on social and your newsletter. And um, we hope to see you very soon at our next session. Thank you so much, May. All right. Thank you guys so much. Have a great night. Have a good night, everyone. Bye. Bye.